Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm A.J. Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. Welcome to the Effortless English Show. As you may know, if you've been watching the show, I am currently learning Spanish. And my Spanish learning has recently become more urgent, meaning I'm feeling more pressure to do it. And the reason is that in about 10 weeks, I'm going to Spain and I'm going to travel in Spain for six weeks. And so suddenly I'm feeling like, Oh my God, I need to improve my Spanish because my Spanish is not very good. My Spanish is maybe a high beginner level. So I'm feeling all this pressure. And it suddenly hits me last week. Oh my God, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta really get serious about Spanish. <laughs> so I, I grab my iPod, I grab my briefcase, and I go down to the local coffee shop, which is where I always study or do work. And I sit down. And I pull out my iPod and put in my earphones. And I get ready to listen to Spanish. Because, you know, as the author of Effortless English and the creator of the Effortless English system, I know that the key to the system is listening, right? It's one of our seven rules. So I know I must listen to Spanish. So I open up my iPod and I turn on some Spanish audio. And I start listening to Spanish. And it's, it starts. Da -da 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 -da, the Spanish starts. And almost immediately, my mind starts to wander away. Do -do -do -do. <laughs> right? I start thinking about other things. I think about the business, Effortless English. I think about my physical training, because I need to physically train for this hike I'm doing in Spain. So I'm thinking about, oh, you know, uh, how long should I, my next run be? And, uh, you know, maybe I'll lift weights tomorrow. And I, w I wonder if I'm, you know, training too much. Uh, and, and, so, and all these thoughts go through my head. Uh, and then I start thinking about, oh, well, what I, what I wonder what we're going to eat tonight. You know, I, I feel like sushi maybe or, I don't know, maybe, maybe uh, go to a restaurant. I don't know, maybe we should eat at home. So all these thoughts are going through my head in English, of course. And the Spanish is just playing in the background. But because I'm not really concentrating, I'm not listening. It's just like random noise. Blah, 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 blah. I, I don't, I'm not understanding really any of it because I'm not really focused on it. I'm not concentrating at all. And then I realize this and I'm like, oh God. Uh, so I get frustrated with myself and I, okay, I must listen. So I, you know, I try to focus. Mm, listen. So I, I listen to the Spanish and listening for a few minutes and then uh, my mind starts wandering again and then I you know and I keep repeating this but as I as I do this I find myself getting irritated right? I'm just annoyed like I, it's just I don't I don't feel like listening to Spanish I just don't want to do it I I don't know why it, it, it felt like it was too too much work it needed to concentrate too much wasn't in the mood I don't know why but it wasn't working and I was just getting more and more annoyed and the more I tried to force myself to listen the more irritated and annoyed I became. And it seemed like the more distracted I became. So finally, I just gave up, turned off the audio, took out the headphones, sat there feeling kind of like a, a failure, like, oh my God, I, 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 I suck as a student. <laughs> you know, it's like there's a saying, you know, in English that sometimes the best teachers are the worst students. And in my case, <laughs> this is probably true. I'm, I'm kind of a terrible language student. Uh, I think it helps me to be a better teacher because I understand your frustrations very well. Because I have them myself. So anyway, I'm sitting there thinking, oh, I've got I've to gotta learn Spanish. I've got to at least improve my Spanish a little bit. I'm going to be in Spain for six weeks. I've got to survive. <sighs> so I'm sitting here thinking, you know, what can I do? Oh, I don't want to listen. Uh, you know, kind of feeling grumpy irritated and then I think well you know I wouldn't mind reading I wouldn't mind reading Spanish right now sometimes I prefer to read because it's easier I find that 
there's less, it feels less stressful, there's less pressure, because when I read in Spanish, I can go very slowly. There's no time pressure, right? You know, I can just go word by word by word, super slowly if I want to. So I thought, yeah, okay, let's try it. So I open up my Kindle app on my iPad, and I open up a book, uh, a Spanish version of a book by Robert Kiyosaki. Robert Kiyosaki, he's the guy that wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and, uh, you know, he writes about finance and money and that kind of stuff, investing. And this is a book, I can't remember the Spanish name or the English name right now, but I've read many of his books, but this was one I had not read in English. But I'm very familiar with uh, his general ideas and uh, his way of writing. So I kind of knew the general topic already, which, of course, helped me understand the book in Spanish. So I start reading it. And then what I found was, very quickly, I started getting into the book. And by getting into the book, I mean that I start f concentrating on it quite easily. Like My mind wasn't distracted. It wasn't like when I was listening, I was distracted. But when I started reading, the distractions went away, and I, I just started enjoying the book, really getting interested in the topic. And there were some new ideas in there that I hadn't read in his other books. Now, one thing I did find was that there were a lot of words I didn't know in Spanish, you know, lots of them. So in the beginning, I tried just highlighting those and using the Kindle Spanish dictionary. So if you have an ebook reader, you know, you, you probably know about this, right? You can, uh, it has a built-in dictionary. So I would highlight the word, boom, the, the definition would pop up. But the definition was in Spanish. And so the problem was that I would read the definition and I wouldn't understand it because the definition of the word also had words that I did not understand. So that became really kind of frustrating and, and annoying. So eventually I decided, ah, yeah, forget it. I'm not going to study Spanish today. I don't feel like studying Spanish, you know, being serious and a student. So I'm just going to read this book. This book seems interesting. There's some cool, interesting ideas in it. It's in, it just happens to be in Spanish. So what? I'm going to read the book and enjoy it. If I find a word I don't know, I'll try to guess the meaning. If I can't guess the meaning, I'll skip it and keep going. Because I was understanding the general ideas. I, was, I could understand the main points. And I found them quite interesting. As I said, it, it, it's a good book. So I, I just stopped all the studying completely and I just read the book. And I ended up reading... I don't know, two or three chapters. It took me probably about an hour and a half. But the great thing is I, I got so into the book. I was so focused on the ideas. It was so interesting to me that I kind of forgot that it was in Spanish. Now, as a result of all of this, I actually ended up you know, reading Spanish for an hour and a half without any stress, without any worry, without any frustration. Fantastic. Now, what's interesting is about a week later, so for, for the rest of that week, I kind of focused on reading. I, I, I just stopped. I, I didn't want to listen. I don't know why. Just wasn't in the mood. Didn't want to listen to Spanish, so I didn't. But then this week, I don't know again what happened, but yesterday, I think, oh, time to read another Spanish book. I've got a bunch of them. So I open up my Kindle, and then I get that same sort of kind of distracted, irritated feeling. Like, ah, I don't want to do this. I don't feel like reading. I don't know, where do these feelings come from? Why the change suddenly? I don't, I really don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> but what I, all I know is that suddenly I didn't really feel like reading. Like reading just, eh, didn't feel like it. So I thought, well, well, maybe listening. So take out the iPod, put in the headphones, Boom, start listening to a, a Spanish mini story by my good friend Oscar in Spain. And this time, totally different experience than the previous week. Really enjoyed it, just sat back and relaxed. I was like, oh, this is great. Just listened, 
Then I decided, you know, I don't want I don't want to sit on my butt here and just listening. I can go for a walk. The great thing about listening with an iPod, I can get outside, go for a walk and still listen. So that's what I did. Put on my little backpack, kept the iPod on and just went for a stroll, went for a nice long walk while listening to Spanish. Today, did exactly the same thing. Walked downtown. I'm in Kyoto, Japan right now, so I walked downtown Kyoto, listening to Spanish. Went to a coffee shop, did a little bit of work, and then walking back home again, listened to Spanish. And this time, totally enjoying listening. Had a great time, really funny stories by Oscar. Fantastic. Let's go to a couple of Twitter questions or comments, and, uh, and then I'll come back to this story a little bit. Okay, so Twitter. On Twitter we have Nani Fascia says, welcome back coach. Thank you. Welcome back because I just got back from Hawaii. Oh, Hawaii. It was great. <laughs> it was a great vacation. Was there about, uh, what, eight or nine days. Nice warm weather. Not hot. Not cold, just warm. Uh, anyway, back in the freezing cold now in Japan, but I'm not complaining. Just saying. <laughs> it's a little... Anyway, Hawaii was great, so thanks. Uh, anyway, Nanifasia asks, uh, he says, says, I bought the Business English course, Business English Conversations, uh, and I think it's very difficult. Do you have any advice? Sure. I do have some advice. First of all, use the text. That's what the text is there for. So in all our courses, we have text, transcripts for all of the audios and all of the videos. The text is there just like my story I was just telling you about in Spanish, right? The text is there because it's easier to understand. Why is it easier? Because you can read it very slowly if necessary. So if you, if you listen to the audio first and you're thinking, oh my God, this is so difficult. It's too fast. Too many new words. Uh, don't panic. Just relax. Maybe just turn it off and go instead, open up the text and read it. Just read it at first. You can read it a few times. Again, if you want to, you could use a, a dictionary or Google Translate, something like that, and look up any words you don't know. Just, just relax, slow down, slow down, no need to worry. You could even do this for a few days, just reading the transcripts, reading the text, reviewing the words you're not sure about, and eventually it will become familiar, it will become easy. And then once that happens, then you can go back and start listening to the audios again, and you'll probably find that they're much easier to understand. And then, you can, of course, listen to them every day until they become super easy. You know, I recommend around seven days, you know, every day for seven days. You can do more a little bit. You can do less a little bit. Up to you. But generally, aim for about seven days. But use that text. That's important. The second thing is to just have an attitude of, of, of interest and relaxation. Don't get stressed out about it, you know. It's normal. It, I understand this because it, it used to happen to me in Spanish a lot where uh, I would get really kind of um, upset by not understanding, right? I would I'd have a new audio, for example, start listening to it. Oh, my God, I can't understand anything. Oh, I'm terrible. I'll never understand Spanish. Ah. And I get you know, really stressed out and just part of learning a language and really part of learning almost any new skill is uh, getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. Meaning you, just, you gotta just know that in the beginning there's gonna be a lot of stuff that you're not gonna know. You're gonna be really bad at some things and you just have to just relax and accept it and keep going. That's my best advice. Okay, ah, here's a, <laughs> speaking of uh, Osaka and cold, a comment, Maddie Mali, who must be in Japan, says, it's too cold in Osaka, Japan, take care. Yes, it is, it's cold. It's very cold. <laughs> it's, uh, I think it was five degrees Celsius when we arrived uh, 
here back from Hawaii. So we're in this nice weather, you know, wearing shorts and then suddenly back in five degree weather. But, you know, I'm, I'm actually getting a little used to the cold. I used to hate, hate, hate it, not minding it so much. In fact, yesterday I went uh, on a long run, four hours. I went running. This is part of my training for the hike we're doing in Spain. And uh, it was actually great. It was really cold and really windy, which at first felt kind of miserable. But uh, after about an hour, after the first hour, we got all the snow started coming down. It was beautiful. So the snow's coming down. I'm running along this path next to a river in the city, getting up closer to the mountains. The mountains surround Kyoto. So all the snow's coming down, and the, there are these ducks in the river. And it was a really a beautiful run. I just relaxed and took it all in, you know, the snow and the ducks and the mountains and the trees and the wind. And it was, I don't know, it was kind of a special moment. I don't know why. So sometimes, sometimes winter can have that kind of, uh, I want to use the word austere, but that it's kind of a difficult word, but you know, it's kind of that very simple beauty, you know, it's different than summer or fall where we have colors and lots of life you know with winter everything is very simple and and uh you know just the, the white snow and the the dark colors of the the river and the the dark trees yeah it's still yeah, it was really nice very nice okay let's take one more and then we'll go back to my uh, S spanish story because i do have a couple points about that actually okay uh common question how do i do well on the ielts test or, you know, people ask, how do I do well on the TOEFL test? How do I do well on the TOEIC test? Whatever test, you know, everyone's got a test they want to do. How do I do well on the test? My best advice for tests is don't focus on the test. Focus on what the test is measuring. Hmm? Imagine that, right? Do you know what I mean? So, for example, let's say, let, let's use math as an example instead of, instead of English. Let's say geometry. So, let's so imagine that you have to take some big geometry exam, the National Geometry Exam. Now, you could take two different strategies. One strategy is to try to trick the test, figure out the geometry test. So, you'll go and you'll buy a bunch of books about how to beat the geometry test. And they'll, they'll give you all these different tactics and they'll have sample geometry tests in them. And they'll maybe give you little secrets and tips and tricks about how you can get a higher score on the national geometry test. That's one approach. Unfortunately, that's the approach a lot of people take. The other approach, shocking, is just become good at geometry. Learn geometry right? Master geometry. Master all of the principles of geometry. Get really good at that topic in math. Do lots of geometry problems. Become great at geometry. If you become great at geometry, then you will get a great score on the national geometry test. You'll get a great score on any geometry test anywhere in the world because you actually know the subject well. You don't need to focus on one particular test and all the little tricks about that one test. Just get good at the topic and you'll be fine. Well, the same is true in English. Instead of focusing on the IELTS and all the little things you have to do on the IELTS or the TOEFL or the TOEIC, just become good at English. <laughs> just learn to understand spoken English very well, speak English very well, read English well, and write English very well. If you can do all four of those things, you'll do well on any English test. TOEFL, TOEIC, IELTS, whatever. doesn't matter. Right? So, stop focusing so much on the test. Just listen to lots. It's the same things I'd say in my book, of course. Listen to lots of English. Read lots of English. Once you become really comfortable and you want to, you know, talk to people, uh, start a blog, start practicing writing, you know, just, just become good at English. Focus on English, not on the test itself. The tests will be fine if your English is good.
All right, back to my story about Spanish. I was talking about Spanish a while ago, and, uh, you know, I was talking about reading, and then I uh, kind of got tired of reading, and then I switched, and I started enjoying listening. And so I think one of the main points of this, and one of the lessons I learned from it, uh, is really to not force things. And in fact, the name Effortless English it actually comes from this idea. I've mentioned this in a, a few shows in the past. The origin, the, the inspiration for the name Effortless English. The original name I, I thought of was Effortless Effort English. And it comes from a Taoist Chinese philosophy called Wu Wei, or idea, Wu Wei. And it's this idea that you you follow the way of nature instead of fighting against nature that the, the the best way to accomplish something or even just the best way to live life is to follow your own nature instead of fighting against it and to follow the nature of the world instead of fighting against it all the time so for example if you're a creative person instead of trying to fight against that and become an accountant because that's where the money is and that's what your parents tell you you must do or told you you must do when you were a child, then you're fighting against your own nature and you'll never be happy as an accountant and you'll probably be a terrible accountant. Instead, if you're a very creative person, very visual, then the Wu Wei approach, the natural approach, the effortless approach would be the smart thing to do, what? Become an artist, become a movie director, a painter, something like that, right? Following your own nature. That's where you'll have the most success in life. And so it's the same kind of idea, not forcing. We can also use this idea even on a small scale in, in day to day. So for example, I went to the coffee shop, sat down, I put in my iPod. I had this idea I have to listen to Spanish. But for some reason, I just didn't want to, you know, my mind, my, my feelings, something about that day or about my mind or about whatever, just didn't want to listen to Spanish that day. So I tried to force it and I just made myself irritated. I didn't accomplish anything. Finally, I just, I stopped forcing and I just said, oh, well, what do I feel like doing? I feel like reading. And by just going with my feelings... I got in an hour and a half of Spanish that day. I enjoyed it thoroughly. It was great. And then similarly, a week later, I started thinking I should read because I'd been reading for several days, but I found that I don't really feel like it. So instead of forcing myself, I must read. I'm now reading Spanish. Instead, I just relaxed and said, oh, well, let's, let's try listening. Ah, listening, that's what I feel like doing. I want to be outdoors. I want to go for a walk and eh, listening to Spanish at the same time. This is great. So I just kind of followed my nature. It's kind of like flowing water. In fact, Taoists use this uh, image a lot of flowing water, right? Water doesn't fight against things. It just flows around problems. If there's a rock, the water flows around it and keeps on going. Now, this kind of applies to... One of the most common questions I get from members of Effortless English. There are different ways people ask the question, but basically the question is this. AJ, exactly how should I use your lessons each day? Which lesson should I listen to first? The mini story or the main lesson or the point of view story or the commentary? Should I read the text first or should I listen first? What if I get bored with the mini story and I don't want to listen to it? Or what if I like the mini story better and I want to listen to that more? AJ, tell me the exact formula. And I always struggle to answer this question. Now, my standard answer, my basic standard answer is every day, listen to each of the audios in the lesson at least one time. So each of those kinds of audios I mentioned, each of those, listen to each of them every single day at least one time. And do this seven days in a row for each lesson. At least seven days. More is fine. 
That's my standard answer. That's the ideal way. That's the, the way the system is designed. However, you are an adult. You are an independent learner. One of the great things about being an independent learner is you don't have to do exactly what the teacher says. You can do whatever you want. It's your learning. It's your life. And you can be flexible, and I encourage you to be flexible. So yes, if you can, if you follow that basic schedule that I just recommended. But you are going to find that some days you, you, don't, you don't want to do it or you can't do it. Some days you might be too busy. Some days maybe you're, you're out and about and you're, you're walking around a lot and it's not convenient to read the text, for example. Some days you'll feel like, oh, you know, I really, I really like these mini stories. They're funny. They're crazy. I like them. Eh, I don't feel like listening to the main one. That's fine. It's fine. Be flexible. While there is a, a basic system, this is an independent learning system, and it's perfectly fine to be flexible. So it's, it's fine if some days you just you, you prefer to read and you don't feel like listening. That's okay. Do that. That's fine. You can even do that for several days. If there's some days where you're really, really into and excited about the mini story lessons and the point of view lessons, you could repeat those more often and not do the other ones so much. Or maybe, maybe the opposite. Some days you might feel like, ah, I really, oh, this main lesson is so interesting to me. The commentary is really interesting. I don't feel like listening to the mini stories today so much. And you could listen, you know, repeat the main lesson several times and not do the mini one so much. Or, you may, or even at all. It's up to you. Some days maybe you'll want to listen to my lessons, but then you also want to listen to an audio book. Or you might want to just read a novel. Also great. Be flexible and realize it's going to change day to day, week to week, month to month. That's natural too. Don't, don't get upset by it. No reason to get upset by it. No reason to force yourself. Okay, then have fun with it. Enjoy it. Just relax. Be flexible and enjoy it. This is the great thing about learning on your own. We're not in school anymore. We don't have to sit in desks. We don't have to do anything we don't want to do. So make it fun, make it enjoyable, be flexible. Customize, tailor the effortless English system to your own personality, to your own needs. You'll enjoy it more, you'll get better results. Okay, let's take a few more Twitter questions and then uh, I'll give you a little bit of news from effortless English. Since I, I feel like we need to catch up a bit since I've been on vacation again. Okay. Bob Parr says, I'm proud to be the first reader to put your book in the biggest bookshelf in the world, anobe.com. Anobe.com. Hmm. I've never heard of that, but thank you. All right. Moving on. Uh, a Twitter name I can't pronounce because it's just a bunch of numbers. It says, AJ, what's your full name? Like, I guess what's my real name rather than AJ. So my first name is Alan. Alan. Alan Hogue, but... All my friends call me AJ, and uh, you should call me AJ too. So if you meet me, call me AJ, not Alan. All right, let's keep on going. Okay, this is another question that is fairly common. I get get it fairly often. Um, Ab9092 Ali asks, uh, can I watch videos while I'm also reading the subtitles. So in other words, can I watch a movie or a video with the subtitles on? Is this the, the correct way? Well, for, there's no correct way. I mean, you know, again, this is not school. There's not one right answer. Is it a good way? Uh, yeah, if the subtitles are in English. Now, watching a movie, an English language movie, with subtitles in your own language, I find is basically useless. And I'm speaking like, for example, if I watch a Spanish movie, but then I have the English subtitles on, I'm just reading the English. I'm not even really hearing the Spanish at all. It's not gonna help. However, if I watch a movie and then this, I have Spanish subtitles on, that can be helpful, right? Because sometimes with the listening, it's hard, it's coming very fast, but if you can also see it, that can 
help your understanding. Now, in, in my book, I have a whole section where I describe how to use movies. And there's a whole system where, you know, you you watch it, you use the subtitles, then you turn the subtitles off, you, you watch each scene several times. So there, there is kind of a whole detailed system. So, you know, if you really want to know the whole full movie technique, uh, read it in my book. But, you know, the short answer is using English subtitles with an English language movie. Yeah, it's fine. But I recommend after you've done that a few times, turn the subtitles off and then just watch the movie again, listening only. Okay, uh, okay. this, this uh, Twitter question gets us into the effortless English news. <laughs> a little bit of frustrating news. Okay, MJ2Love says, Hello, Mr. Hogue. I would like the book Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. But I want the audiobook. Can you send me the audiobook? Where can I get the audiobook? <sighs> Where indeed can you get the audiobook? For the past month, I have been telling you the audiobook is coming soon. And on Twitter, <laughs> in the last few weeks, I've been saying the audiobook should be ready in just a few days. And then a few days pass. Do, 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 do. And. It's still not ready. It's the never-ending saga, the never-ending story of my audiobook. Of course, I should know by now, never, ever, 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 to give you a date for a new course or anything new coming out, because it, these things always happen much later than I expect. Every time I say, I've got a new course, it'll be ready in a month. And then a month comes, it's not ready. Two months, still not ready. Six months later, finally ready. So I, I thought the audiobook and the website where you can get it would be ready, I don't know, probably about six weeks ago. And I'm just still talking to the, you know, the web designers and the technical people and, oh my God, still not ready. At this point, I'm afraid to tell you a date. You know, I want to say, just one more week. But if I tell you that, it'll be another month. So I think the audiobook will be ready by 2016. I'm confident that within the next year, it'll be ready. And hopefully within the next month. And hopefully, I'll pray, pray to the gods of, of the web that it'll be ready in just a few days. That's what they keep telling me. A few more days, AJ. It'll be ready in just a few days. And so anyway, coming soon. I don't know what that means. <laughs> as soon as as soon as the website's ready. So the deal is the audiobook's recorded. I recorded it, I don't know, six, eight months ago. So that, that was my part. It's done. Uh, but now we're just, we're making a website where you can, you know, get the audiobook, buy the audiobook, and then where you, of course, can download the audio files. So it's those two websites that are taking time. That's, that's what's been the delay. And I'm not a web designer or a tech person at all. So I just kind of, you know, tell those guys what I want. And then I just wait until it gets finished and uh, still not done yet. Sorry. <laughs> you know, I'm frustrated too. I feel kind of foolish because I keep saying, it's going to be ready in just a couple days, and then it's not. So, uh, here's what I can say. As soon as the audiobook is available, I will send out a tweet on Twitter. I will post something on my, on the Effortless English Facebook page, and I will send out an email to all of our email subscribers. So just keep following me on Twitter or email or whatever. And as soon as I know, as soon as it's ready, you will know. More effortless English news. What else is happening? This month, February, is going to kind of be pronunciation month. Pronunciation month. I've realized that pronunciation is something that I've neglected meaning I haven't focused on very much in Effortless English. In the book, I did write about pronunciation. And after writing about it in the book, I realized, 
you know, I, I need to start talking about pronunciation more and, and helping you improve your pronunciation because that is an important part of speaking English, of course, very important, right? If you don't have clear pronunciation, then other people will not understand you. So even if your grammar is perfect, even if your vocabulary is fantastic, even if your listening is amazing, if your pronunciation is bad, no one will understand you. So not very good communication. So pronunciation is very important. So I thought, hey, this month, let's uh, focus on pronunciation more. So I've got at least two things coming up about pronunciation. Uh, the first thing, I'm going to have a guy named a Paul Gruber as a guest on the Effortless English Show. He is a pronunciation expert. He's a speech pathologist. He has a course on uh, improving your pronunciation. So I'm going to get him on the show. We've already chatted a little bit on Skype. He's He wants to come on the show. So I'll have him a get, as a guest on the show this month, and we can ask him some questions and talk to him about uh, pronunciation and how to improve your pronunciation. Second, we're going to do a special webinar over at Learn Real English. Learn Real English, that's the, uh, the course with my friends Kristen and Joe. We're going to do a special webinar about pronunciation where, again, we'll talk more about pronunciation and some of the techniques and methods you can use to improve your pronunciation with English. So we'll have a special webinar with Learn Real English, and we'll have Paul Gruber, pronunciation expert, on the show. Pronunciation month at the Effortless English Show. Coming soon. All right. And finally, uh, the last little bit of news for Effortless English. This uh, applies mostly to our VIP and ACC members. ACC is basically the VIP program for Learn Real English. They're two separate companies, Effortless English, Learn Real English. Learn Real English is focused more on casual conversations like between friends and family, that kind of thing. Effortless English, I would describe more as professional communication. But And they both have membership programs, the VIP and ACC. Anyway, the point. We're going to have a meeting in Barcelona for members, for VIP members and ACC members. So I'll be going to Spain, as I've mentioned several times in the show already. And at the end of my trip in Spain, at the end of my hike, when it's all done, I'll be going to Barcelona. Joe Weiss from Learn Real English, he'll also be in Barcelona. And my wife, Tomoe, will also be in Barcelona. We're all going to go to Barcelona and we're going to have a meeting with our VIP members, Effortless English members, Learn Real English members, Business English Conversation members. You're all invited! It's, this is just going to be a social meeting, so not going to do any kind of seminar, no classes, nothing like that. We're just going to hang out together and, you know, speak English together, chat, have a good time, you know, go to, go to some coffee shops, go to lunch, go to dinner, go for some walks in the city. That's it. You know, just, just meet each other face to face. It's just purely social, purely for fun. I know our superstar member, Julia, from Italy is already coming. She's already bought her ticket. I believe our uh, other superstar member, Max, is also coming. The Italians are coming. And I believe, I don't know, I'll have to check Twitter and check our VIP site. I know we've got a few more people who are definitely coming to our meeting in Barcelona. This is really one of my favorite things to do, by the way, just, just on a personal note. I love, love, love just meeting you face to face. So when I travel and I go to other countries and we have a chance just to socially meet, you know, just go out for coffee and chat. I, mean, I love it. It's, it's fantastic. The, the web is great. We've created this amazing international community through the internet, through this technology. It's, it's wonderful that I can talk to you and I'm in Japan right now. You are in your country and we're you know, communicating and connecting. That's fantastic. But even better is when we can uh, take this connection and take this relationship we have and then make it face to face. And occasionally we have those opportunities when I travel and this will be one of them in Barcelona. So if you can come to Barcelona, it'll be in June, June 6th and 7th in Barcelona, Spain. Uh, please plan to. It'll be great. We'll be meeting somewhere in the downtown Barcelona area. 
and I'll have more details about that coming soon. I'll email all the VIP and ACC members with details about where we're going to meet, what time, all that stuff. But you can go ahead and plan your hotels or hostels now and your flights. As I can tell you, we'll be meeting in the center of the city in that Ramblas area. Ramblas is the main walking street. So that kind of central old part of Barcelona. So hope to see you there. That's it for our show today. I hope you had a great week and I'll be back again. Go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com to get more information about Effortless English, courses, the free email course, and everything else. See you again soon. Bye for now.